Starfield, being the next giant RPG from Bethesda Game Studios, will have a ton of wearable clothes and customizable armor for us, the player character, and all of the differing NPC groups and factions to wear. In this video, we will go over everything BGS has shared with us to date on this topic to see what interesting things we can deduce. Other than looking sweet, each individual piece of armor in their games serves a very useful role in shielding the player from damage. Not just bullet and melee damage, but also extra buffs like radiation and energy resistance. They can also be customized in other ways to help the player, like with increased carry capacity and improved stealth among other things. Armor in recent Bethesda games has become more and more customizable, and I assume it will only follow that trend. It is customized through crafting, aka scrapping and using those resources you found out in the world to upgrade said piece of armor. The armor in their recent games has a base or undergarment layer like the vault suit, and the individual pieces on top like a helmet, chest plate, etc. In Starfield, it looks to be taken to a whole nother level with how many pieces and layers of armor slash clothing we could have on. I assume we will have our clothes underneath everything and then our spacesuit on top of that. It seems that the spacesuits in the game will split at the airlock seams into individual pieces, like the gloves, torso area, boots slash pants, and a helmet. So you could switch out certain pieces for ones you like better, and or customize a certain piece for slight improvements and differences. An example of these slight differences and combinations is shown here with these two United Colony Guards. They both have the same style helmet and pants slash boots, but with slight modifications. They also have completely different torso armor. Finally, on top of all that, there seems to be a handful of accessories, including, but not limited to, jetpacks, backpacks, utility belts, oxygen tanks, and air filters we may be able to attach to ourselves. On Earth-like planets, there will be no need for spacesuits, but they will be necessary to make some inhospitable planets explorable to the player character. The first spacesuit we will acquire is the Argos Extractor's Miner Suit when we build our character and interact with our first artifact. I really like the headlamp functionality. Also on its back is what I assume is an oxygen tank and temperature regulation tubes. This suit is definitely an upgrade from what our earth miners are used to. Our second spacesuit will most likely be the Constellation suit, which is white and red to match the group's logo, and it has a jetpack attached. I cannot wait to use that in the game. I hope it feels natural to use like the jump gliding in Destiny. One thing to note here is that the only airlock seams we could actually see is for the gloves. I assume underneath the tool belt and at the neck area there are another two seams to make the suit combinations possible. The next player worn suit shown on Sidonia appears to have a different jetpack slash backpack than the Constellation one. This suit also has more pronounced cooling tubes and some small gas canister attached at their hip. I'm wondering what the functionality of that canister is. Does it hold some type of catalyst for the jetpack? This suit we see here is interesting. I don't know if it's the desert background or the dark brown color of the suit, but I'm getting real New Vegas Ranger vibes from this one. Maybe this is the suit we get for joining the Rangers of the Freestar Collective. Not sure though, considering we see this ranger-like jacket. Maybe there's a ranger suit and a jacket. Lastly, for player character suits, this one we see on Mars appears to have a backpack attached and a helmet similar to the Argos mining helmet. As far as NPCs go, this United Colony's security uniform looks pretty cool with everything including the radio. We also see this worn on New Atlantis, next to our only look at a child other than the concept art. And the suit worn by the man holding the artifact looks absolutely awesome. I really love the amulet that he's wearing. He kind of reminds me of Salvador Dali with his mustache and way of speaking. As far as enemies go, first we have the Crimson Fleet. Their suits seem to be rugged, comparable to the Raiders in Fallout. From the concept art, we get a look at a pirate with light, medium, and heavy armor. This skull helmet guy here may be a higher ranking member like a captain. We see this helmet three times. I'm wondering if all captains slash higher ranking members would wear this helmet or it is all just the same guy. The duct tape makes me lean towards it all being the same guy. Maybe it is one of the leaders of the pirates shown here. 
Next are the Violent Spacers, which I assume to be the non-joinable raiders in Starfield. One interesting thing to note here about their suits is that they have a logo on their shoulder, leading me to think that they are quite organized, especially when compared to Fallout 4's raiders. And last but not least, we have the Ecliptic Mercenaries, which I think will be the equivalent to the Gunners in Fallout 4. Basically, a better equipped raider slash mercenary for hire. These are easily the most heavily armored NPCs we have seen in Starfield so far. If you look closely at their legs and arms, you could actually see them wearing an armored exosuit. This is one of the most exciting things in this topic that I have noticed. The armored exosuit, I imagine, will work almost like power armor does in Fallout, wherein it allows the player slash NPC to carry more and take more damage. I can't wait to get my hands on one of these suits just so I could carry as much loot as humanly possible. And we get a look at their logo on his shoulder. It's an eclipse. Honestly, these guys are pretty badass. So there we have it for armor and clothes we've seen in Starfield as of yet. Let me know if I've missed anything important. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you found this informative and or enjoyable, feel free to like and subscribe to support the homie. I still cannot believe the amount of wonderful positive feedback and support from all of you. Thank you all so much and have an awesome day or night. I really hope to catch you guys next time. Later.